This channel is called Josh is Making Music because, well, my name is Josh and I like to make music. Now, before I had a music channel, I actually had wanted to make a YouTube channel about photography and that plan fell through, which is fine. You know, that happens with plans sometimes. The only thing is, what am I supposed to do with all these cameras? I guess I can make music with them. Before we start, since I'm gonna be sampling a lot of different sounds, I thought it'd be fun to share those samples with you all as well. So after you're done with the video, if you check the description, you'll find a link where you can download the samples that I get from the cameras, whether or not I actually have used them in the music I make in the video. I guess you could also check the link before watching the video, but you know, I'd like you to watch the video. Now, I don't know if any of my viewers are too young to be familiar with film cameras. I hope that doesn't come off as sounding sort of elitist, but the reason I'm using older cameras instead of more modern, newer ones is that these older cameras have so many mechanical parts in them that you can manually operate that you can generate a lot of fun sounds like that. And I think that we'll start with the Canonet QL17, the first film camera that I actually ever bought with my own money. Next up is the Minolta X700. I've acquired this one more recently than any of the others, and it's also the one I have used most recently. Next is a Contax G1. Of all my film cameras, this is the one I've used the most and is also the most modern. It actually has autofocus and it can automatically wind film, which means that we get a lot of fun, kind of industrial sounds from its little motors. And last is this Kodak Reflex 2, which is not in great shape right now and actually doesn't properly work, but I got it for free from my local camera shop they were moving and they just wanted to get rid of it. It uses a now defunct format of film called 220 film, but at least you can make fun sounds with it. So now that we've recorded sounds from these four cameras, we're gonna bring them into Ableton where we can play with them a little bit more. So I wanted to walk you all through what I did to make a song using the sounds from the cameras. Now I just used four here because I'm using Ableton Live Lite, which only lets me have up to eight tracks but I am gonna have some more samples from each camera in the full sample pack. Now, to start with, from the Canon at QL17, I had kind of flicked the lens hood a little bit, and I got this sort of metallic sound that I thought would be perfect for a hat. So the dry sound sounds like this. And after I added some reverb, I got this. Which, to my ears at least, almost sounds like a tambourine slash hi-hat. Next, from the Minolta X700, I used its shutter sound, and without the effects, I added some delay and reverb, but the dry sound is this. And when I added the delay and the reverb, I thought it sounded kind of like a weird, harsh snare. Next, I took the shutter sound from the Canon at QL17, and this, you can see here, I transposed down 44 semitones, so quite a bit lower than it was before. And when I've got it transposed down that low, what I get is a sound like this. Kind of a distant thumping kick. Then, as just like some fun effects, I took the sound of the shutter and the automatic film winder from the Contax G1. And with this again, I added some reverb, as you can see down here, and that made it sound like this. So normal, but <laughs> just a little more reverby. Then my last sound I took from the Kodak Reflex 2. This one, I again added some reverb, but I also played around with it. I transposed it down a little, I shortened it, and what I got was this fun riser-like tone that I used as a transition. So I took all of these and I combined them with some plugins. I have Tau Uno LX, which emulates the classic Roland Juno. I have the Surrealistic MG1, which emulates the Realistic MG1, and then OBXD, which emulates an Oberheim OBX. So with all of those together, once I unsolo the Kodak Reflex, I was able to create what I thought was a kind of synth wavy vibe using all of them. And so once I had all those sounds in here, it was really just a matter of arranging them in the order that I wanted. In conclusion, I love weird found sound sampling projects like this. Finding the music that's just kind of living in everyday objects around your house is a super cool and delightful experience. If you've done anything like this, leave a comment and let me know because I would love to check it out. 
If you're new around here, please consider hitting subscribe as well to be notified next time I upload and to help support the channel. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. I actually want to take a photo to commemorate the occasion. You look beautiful. Anyway, we're going to finish up by listening to a track I made using the camera sounds for percussion. Thanks again for watching and listening, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.